Hello, I am the Irish guy, and this video is a mess. I am so confused by so many Premier League clubs transfer activity this summer. Some of these deals are clever, savvy business that do make sense, but then that same club will do something incredibly monumentally dumb, which makes me question everything. And I mean everything. I'm almost at the point of questioning whether space aliens exist or whether or not hamsters can laugh. But all right, pretty simple this. I'm going to take a look at every Premier League club and rank each team's summer transfer business. Honestly, I know this video is going to cause many of you to rage in the comments. But, uh... Let's just see what happens. Right, let's go. 20th Wolves. Forget about just this summer. This is one of the worst summer transfer windows I've ever seen. Wolves have lost Mateus Nunes, Ruben Neves, Nathan Collins, Connor Cody, Raul Jimenez, Ryan Giles, Jao Matinho, and Adama Traore. It's essentially like waking up on Christmas morning and finding out that you've been robbed. The burglars didn't even leave the cookies left for Santa Claus and also did a wee on the rug. Other than making loans permanent, what fresh new faces have Wolves actually added to the squad? Wow. Mad Doherty on a free. They're probably munching a pie midway through his medical. They've sold Nunes and replaced him with 21 year old midfielder Tommy Doyle from Man City. Which just feels like a pity swap. It's like someone nicking your wife and then giving you a free sausage roll in return just because they feel sorry for you looking at Kirk Van Houten watching Netflix on the couch. The bloke isn't exactly a wonder kid. He's just 9 years off 30 and has 50 minutes of Premier League football under his belt. Phil Foden, he ain't. 19th Luton Town. Is this it? Seriously, do Luton Town really believe that this degree of summer shopping is acceptable? It's been woeful. Like they just spent nine hours walking around TK Maxx. They've signed two goalies from the championship, Blackburn's Thomas Kraminski and Norwich's Tim Krull, both of whom are about as exciting as the Spiders' birthday. They've dragged in Danish centre-back Matt Anderson from Barnsley, former Man United wonder kid Tate Chong, who is no longer a teen wing star. He's 24 years old and now is all the hype of the fifth Toy Story film. Yeah, nobody wants that. They've signed the latest Man United reject centre-back Ted and Menji. Honestly, I would just chuck him into the same group as Axel Tonzebi or Timothy Fosu Mensa. I would sooner dig up my dead dog and munch in its fur than sign either one of those rejects. Jacob Brown is another one. A non-scoring striker from Stoke. Ross Barkley is the marquee signing, but he just spent the last year looking like a lost puppy in France, staring at his morning croissant as if it was a bum. The only signing I do like is former Cork City and Limerick FC winger Chudusi Ogbeni arriving from Rotherham on a free. That is a tasty buy, but otherwise... No, this is like receiving a sack of mud from Santa Claus. 18th, Crystal Palace. I don't think there's another club in world football who are stuck on pause as much as Crystal Palace. Look, this summer they've barely done anything. Dragged in Jefferson Lerma on a free from Bournemouth. Yes, they showed a glimmer of excitement by tying up a 20 million pound move for Brazil wonder kid Mateus Franca. Dean Henderson is a quality 15 million pound buy from Man United. Although Sam John Johnson has actually played more games in goal for England than him. So this arrival is a little unnecessary. Losing Wilfred Zaha on a free to get a Tassel right wasn't great. But keeping Michael Olisi away from Chelsea was. So not a complete disaster, but still very meh. And buying Rob Holding from Arsenal. It's arguably the most boring transfer in the list. 17th. Brentford. Brentford's transfer window does not impress me in the slightest. They've only lost one key player, yes, but... It was sort of a biggie, loaning out goalkeeper David Rea to Arsenal. That was about as clever as he was going to have a picnic in Bain's prison pit. They replaced him with Dutch goalie Mark Flecken from Freiburg, but bit of a downgrade. They've signed Teenage centre-back Kim ji Su from Shonglam FC in South Korea. And Irish centre-back Nathan Collins came from Wolves for £20 million. I like him, but that is too much money for a mediocre defender. It is such a dull window, even trying to digest this business. It's like trying to swallow a cauliflower cake. Boring. 16. Sheffield United. Sheffield United's transfer window looks worse than it is. Yes, the lazy thing to do would be to see that they sold two star players, like their 23-year-old Senegalese goal machine, Eleven Ndiaye, to Marseille, and their Norway international fielder, Sander Berg, to Burnley. It's not great, no. But they have signed USA defender, Austin Trusty from Arsenal, all action commentary midfielder Gustav Hammer, Brazilian wildcard midfielder Vinicius Souza from Lowell in Belgium, James McAtee is an exciting Man City midfield kid who's joined alone too, Tom Davies has also arrived from Everton to bolster their midfield squad depth, he is about as talented as a bowl of pig meat, yes, but over 150 Premier League games, to sign that level of Premier League experience for less than the price of a fried omelette, it's not bad at all, here's my worry though, Sheffield United are gambling on a young striker. An £18 million deal wrapped up for Aston Villa striker Cameron Archer, who just helped England win the under-21 Euros. It sounds great, but 
Ryan Brewster was also an exciting England underage international striker who joined the Blaze three years ago and quickly turned into the ghost of Saito Berahino. The deals for Ivorian winger Benny Traore and midfielder Anis Ben Slamane, both arriving from Scandinavian leagues. This window is a huge level of risk, but it's not as immediately terrible as you might think. 15th, Fulham. I'm confused. At first, I thought Fulham's transfer window wasn't as horrible as everybody thinks. They've sold Alexander Mitrovic to Alalal. Yeah, only one person alive on planet Earth can say that he scored more goals for this club than him. So this was a horrible move. And replacing him with a pass that non-scoring Raul Jimenez from Wolves was embarrassing. But on the plus side, Mitrovic turns 30 years old in just a little over a year. And you managed to get 50 million pounds for him? I just remember this same club having to cash in on a 25-year-old Luis Saha. A far better player, by the way. And just for a measly 12 million pounds? So to be fair, it's still a great financial deal, but it is still a loss. However, I think the signing of the Ajax utility defender Calvin Bassi, that is clever underrated business, as is the arrival of versatile Belgian fullback Timothy Castagna from Leicester, and I know he's got the end product of a burnt sausage sandwich, but Marco Silva clearly likes a speed demon on the wing, and so to upgrade on Daniel James, a quick little boy, but who had the upper body strength of a daddy long legs, to replace him with Adama Traore, all pace yes, but built like the mountain of Game of Thrones? Oh yes, please! I do like the signing of 22 million pound Alexis Wobie from Everton. That is quality business. So, this is so confusing. Parts of this window for Fulham are great, but other parts are horrible. 14th Brighton. Football hipsters will try and convince you into believing that Brighton have had a spectacular transfer window yet again, but I am sorry, don't believe the vegan coconut drinking nerds who'd probably cook their own eyebrows into a pie to be different. I think 21 year old Brazilian Jao Pedro is an excellent 20 million pound buy from Watford and has the potential to be the next Richard Sun. Yes, that is a compliment. And James Milner's leadership is a tiny little freebie signing from Liverpool. They picked up Brazilian centre back Iger Julio from Fiorentina. Midfielder Mamad Dahoud picked up from Dortmund on a free. Bar for Bruggen is a young 60 million pound goalkeeper signed for Anderlecht. Yes, but is the Dutch goalie really gonna go on to have a better career than Robert Sanchez, who has left Brighton to become Chelsea number one? I realize the Zerbi seemed to hate Sanchez. Maybe the Spanish goalie played a training ground prank on him. Like, I don't know, sprinkling his armpit hair on the gaffer's toast? But selling him to Chelsea was not the move. Was I see and Alexis McAllister have also both quit the club for Stamford Bridge and Anfield. That is the absolute heart ripped out of Brighton's midfield, and he replaced them with a mega money deal for Leo's team teenage midfielder Carlos Balaba. How overwhelming is that for the child? But what has saved this window is that you have somehow convinced Barcelona to let you borrow Ansu Fati. Three years ago, people were predicting the Spanish winger to be the best player in the world. The fact he's agreed to join Brighton, that alone has plumped you a few places up the list. Wow, 13th, Everton. I don't love Everton's transfer window because so much of it is absolute pure risk, but I don't hate it either. I do like the signing of a leader like Ashley Young on a free, and they have finally convinced Arnold Dejuma to join them on loan. And the loan arrival of 26-year-old winger Jack Harrison from Leeds, that's a clever little signing that's gone so under the radar. I don't think anyone's barely mentioned this. It's made about as much of a splash as a bumblebee having a heart attack in a pond, but in the same breath, losing a key player like Alex Awobi to Fulham is horrible and sort of ruins everything. And here are the risks. A desperate 40 million pounds has been spent on two strikers. One, 19 year old Yusuf Tramiti from Sporting Lisbon, who has scored four professional goals in his entire life. Four. His mum probably has all the goals that'll take two of the fridge. The other one is 25-year-old Portuguese striker Beto, who uh, scored 10 goals in Serie A for Udinese last season and has never received a single Portugal cap. He's tall, rangy, and quick, but he's a hipster's favourite. This reminds me of when Everton signed Joe. Anyone remember him? This is an okay Everton window, but again, it's a bit like choosing to sit beside a cannibal on a nine-hour flight to Japan. It's too much of a risk. Twelfth. Tottenham. Tottenham's window is very similar to Fulham's. Yes, they've lost an absolute goal-scoring talisman too. Selling Harry Kane to Bayern Munich for £100 million. That is a mega breakup. I still can't quite believe that he's actually left Spurs. But like Fulham, they've also made some clever, tidy little signings. In comes Dutch centre-half Mickey van de Ven from Wolfsburg. Little known Italian goalkeeper Guglie Vicario is replacing Hugo Lloris and Ness. Although this one just seems very Pierluigi Gallini, doesn't it? Israeli winger Manor Solomon is an okay little signing. Just take Danjuma's play on the bench, but it is obviously the £50 million deal for James Madison from Leicester. That is the game changer. So again, like Fulham, there's a massive blotch on their transfer window, but also some clever little deals. But they have just been dealt the embarrassment of missing out on signing Barcelona megastar Ansu Fati.
Matty. And so instead, are tying up a £50 million deal for Brennan Johnson from Nottingham Forest. It's also very mediocre. 11th, Burnley. Burnley have been very, very busy this window. But how many of their signings are actually that impressive for that much money spent? You'd expect some of these signings to excite the Burnley fans. But no, it's probably about as exciting as watching a monkey lick its armpit. Look, a £50 million deal for Man City goalkeeper James Trafford looks like quality business. So he's barely out of his teens. Both Leeds and Southampton got relegated last season. Both of whom had goalkeepers who probably still smeared acne cream on their toast. They probably both brought a school bag to work. Ziki Anthony is an £18 million centre forward bought from Basel, which is a massive risk. They've snapped up midfielder Sander Berg from Sheffield United for £10 million, which is all sorts of weird. A ball playing highly rated midfielder, yes, but so far for Burnley, it just looked like a dying pony. Irish centre half Dara O'Shea is a £7 million buy from West Brom. Nathan Redmond is joined from Besiktas son of free. They bought gank playmaker Mike Trezor. They paid £14 million for Aaron Ramsey. No, not the Welsh one with the lunchbox filled with donuts. Nah, this is just Jacob's brother from Aston Villa. Oh yeah, an ex Tottenham and Liverpool fifth choice goalie, Lawrence Vigaru, has joined from Leighton Orient on a free. That's about as thrilling as being served a microwave mouse sandwich. It's a lot of signings, yes, but all very... 10th, Arsenal. Arsenal's transfer window is probably the most overrated one in the league. They've sold a leader like Granit Xhaka to Bayer Leverkusen and replaced him with a £100 million Declan Rice from West Ham. It's an upgrade, yes, but a laughably expensive one. Versatile defender Julian Timber is a quality £40 million buy from Ajax. Oh, there really is just a Dutch Ben White. A defender will just play anywhere that he's asked. And I've already said that a £65 million deal for Chelsea playmaker Kai Havertz. I think he's massively going to flop and bringing in David Rea from Brentford causes unnecessary friction in the goalkeeper in camp, making both goalies nervous and stiff. Honestly, it's going to be like Jens Lehmann and Manuel Almunia all over again. Ramsdale will probably be trying to poison Raya Soup. I think getting rid of Kieran Tierney alone to Real Sociedad absolutely harms the squad depth, and the Gunners could have done with buying another striker. Not selling an informed Fuller and Balogun to Monaco. So yeah, it's actually not that clever at all. Ninth, Newcastle. Newcastle's transfer window is also very mid. Is that the right word? Mid. I will always say that selling Alisson Maxim to Al Ali for just £23 million and also you can fund a £38 million deal for Leicester's Harvey Barnes. I'll always think that was horrible idiot see. Listen, you guys have just sort of focused on the future in this window. Yes, £55 million Italian midfielder Sandro Tonali from AC Milan is the big saucy marquee buy and he is great but £35 million for Southampton's 20 year old right back Tino Levermento and a loan deal with a £35 million obligation to buy for Chelsea's 18 year old left back Lewis Hall. Oh and by the way, Tonali isn't the only bloke they signed from AC Milan this summer They've also snapped up 18 year old Arden centre back Cahill Heffernan. You know, the former Cork defender who weirdly spent the last 18 months in Italy. Overall, this window. It's just one for the future. Eighth, Man United. People are being too harsh on Man United summer shopping. I've already said that getting a ball playing goalkeeper like Andre Onana is a spectacular upgrade on a pretty basic David De Gea. I do think Mount from Chelsea is a clever midfield signing too. Rasmus Hoyland is a 70 million pound risk from Atalanta, but he's clearly going to be an upgrade of Ralph Wilk Horst. I mean, th that's not hard. There's probably actual scarecrows who pose more of a goal threat than him in the Premier League. I think getting left back Sergio Regulon on loan from Spurs, somebody who had a monster debut season at Tottenham, he was so good at at one point, uh, Jimmy Redknapp was probably getting ready to wrestle Roy Keane on live TV to stress how good the ex Real Madrid left back was. And they replaced Henderson with Turkey number one goalie Altiar Bayundi. And they have finally signed Fiorentina's midfielder Sofian Amrabat. So, all in all, there is some good business there. It's an overall improvement on the squad. It's decent. Seventh, Man City. Man City's transfer window is. Oh. Okay. If I'm a Manchester City fan, I'm not exactly hyperventilating under the couch. Nah, the reality is that you see your treble winning captain, Ilkay Gundogan, depart for Barcelona on a free. He has literally gone for less than a packet of crisps. Make no mistake about it, this is one of the worst departures in the history of your club. And I do think they're sending both Riyad Mahrez and American Report to the Saudi Pro League. Sure, you pocked it over 50 million pounds, but I do think those two losses will really hit your squad after Christmas. These have been your midfield signings. 25 million pound Mateo Kovacic from Chelsea. <sighs> it's a bit... Nah. And you signed Wolves midfielder Matthias Nunes for £53 million. It's a decent buy, but why didn't you do this a year ago? Instead of giving £50 million to Leeds for Calvin Phillips, someone whose pockets are probably constantly filled with stolen cake. I think the £55 million for Van winger Jeremy Doku, who has the goal-scoring stats of a potato, I don't care what you say, he's a downgrade on Maris. The only upgrade is... Out goes Laporte. In comes £77 million Croatian centre back Josko Vardio. This is like if Liverpool had signed Virgil van Dijk when he was 21. This is a monster world class signing. The best transfer of any Premier League club this summer. So that alone catapults City into the top half of this list. But honestly, he alone has saved their window. Because if it weren't for him, 
I'd have them bottom six. Sixth, Nottingham Forest. For the first two months of this summer, Nottingham Forest were in the relegation zone of this list. And they hadn't done much at all. But they have sprung into license at the end of July. Bringing in ex-Chelsea defender Ola Aina from Torino. And Man United winger Anthony Langer for £50 million. Pounds. They've decided to stop their obsession with Henderson. Instead going out and getting the actual USA number one Matt Turner from Arsenal on the cheap. Who actually is an upgrade. World Cup winning left back Gonzalo Montiel has arrived on loan from Sofia. Although I do think he's going to be wet spaghetti pie. But who cares because they've also signed Arsenal's Portuguese. He's left back Nuno Tavares. They confusing. Why is Steve Cooper signing three left wing backs? It's like turning up to a picnic with 17 egg sandwiches. But they've also gone Brazilian. 19 year midfield winner kid Andre Santos linked up with Chelsea this year. Sean in preseason. And has now been snapped up of a forest on loan. As well as Callum Hudson and Doyle. I know his career has sort of since dripped into a toilet bowl. But I mean, the Bayern Munich president was at one point practically ready to eat his own dog in a cake to get this winger to the club. And they swapped Remo Fruller for Argent international midfielder and literal ball on a captain, Nicolas Dominguez. I mean, that one's probably a bit of a like for like. The only blemish to this window is selling Brennan Johnson to Tottenham. Signing Divock Origi from AC Milan. He has got a huge profile, yes. He has scored in the Champions League final. But other than the big occasion, he doesn't really score goals. Ibrahim Sangare. Forrest are actually selling Ibrahim Sangare for 30 million pounds. Wow, wow, wow. This 25 year old Ivory Coast International. He has now left PSV for Forrest. This is up there where Brighton getting fatty. Fifth, Liverpool. All summer long, Liverpool fans have been complaining about their transfer window. But it's mostly been positive, right? Look at the players you've sold. Are you really going to miss them? It's like binning a bunch of rotting furniture that was stinking up your kitchen. Hiding in the field editions of Dominic Solis by from RB Leipzig. Alexis McAllister from Brighton and Ryan Gravenberch from Bayern Munich. All top class buys. And even the Japan captain, Wataru Endo, is a 20 million pound bloke just to stick on the bench. Liberal fans have spent this summer screaming until the point of almost breaking their lungs. But relax. It's surely a positive window. Fourth, Chelsea. What Chelsea have done is give themselves a much needed haircut. Instead of just trying to fix the squad that finished 12th, what Todd Bowley has done is a Game of Thrones as cull. You swear these players are all guests at a red wedding because 10 first teamers have been sold. I do think one or two will be a loss though. I wouldn't have sold Mason Mount to Man United. And I think Cesar Aspilicueta quitting for Atletico Madrid will leave a huge leadership hole in that team. A bit like when John Terry went to Aston Villa. And Christian Pulisic would have been a useful winger to have for Pochettino Ball. But otherwise, yeah. They They've chucked away a lot of dead wood and they replaced them with some sparkling young talent. The likes of Robert Sanchez, Axel De Zassi, Romeo Lavia, Angelo Gabriel and Nicholas Jackson in particular look like fresh hungry buys. They've added another £100 million midfielder and they've somehow managed to persuade Manchester City to give them Cole Palmer 2 for 45 million quid. I know that signing takes Bowley spending to a billion but wow what a deal. Third Aston Villa. Pretty simple. This has been a brilliant Aston Villa transfer window. I'm sorry, but it has. I know his form has recently been in the gutter, but any football team signing Yuri Tiedemann's on a free for less than the price of a chicken and cheese kebab, it's a clever little deal. I've already said I'm not impressed with the loan deal for Galatasaray problem child Nicolo Zaniolo, but come on, a 30 million pound move for Villarreal's in demand. Manchester City links center half Pau Torres and spending over 50 million pounds on Bayer Leverkusen's explosive goal scoring winger Moussa Diaby. And Barcelona have also given them French center back Clement Longley on loan to what? The fifth choice centre back. It's been an excellent window. Second Bournemouth. Who expected Bournemouth to have as good a window as this? Not only have they managed to hang on to their best players, but they've also gone out there and chucked over 100 million pounds on mostly quality. They splashed the cash on Bristol City midfielder Alex Scott and coupled that with a 23 million pound move for Tyler Adams. The USA captain who completed a medical at Chelsea the previous week. That completely revamps the home midfield. And just like with Pep Guardiola started to fix Man City by bringing in two new flash full backs. Then a um, young left back Milos Kirkes from from AZ Alkmaar and Norwich right back Max Ahrens. The former used to play for AC Milan while the latter. Two years ago, Barcelona were begging to sign him on loan for little old Bournemouth standards. This is an absolutely amazing transfer window. Probably the best in the history of their club. First, West Ham. This is such an underdog story. The fact that West Ham are first in this list. Ask me a month ago. And I'd have had them rock bottom because they just sold Declan Rice for £100 million. And all they've done was sign Irish winger Sean Moore from Cliftonville. But their business in August has been incredible. Edson Alvarez was an Ajax midfield destroyer who was linked to Man City recently. He's now a £35 million West Ham buy. England international midfielder James Ward-Prowse has been finally wrestled away from Southampton for £30 million. And £38 million Ajax playmaker Ghana international Mohamed Kudus is the absolute sprinkling of star quality. Okay, I do think the £20 million Greek international centre-back Konstantinos Mavropanos is going to be a chunky flop. But that midfield makeover, chucking the fact that this club are probably going to offer the contract to a rejuvenated Jesse Lingard once he finally runs off those holiday burgers. I mean, David Moyes knows how to get the best out of this guy. This is an incredible West Ham window.
Anyway, that's the video. Let me know. How have I beat you, Arsh, in your squad? Let me know in the comments. Rank yours. I want to see where you rank. It's so subjective, isn't it? Let me know in the comments. Let me know. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give a like, subscribe, and subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.